that bird. We fought for that bird. And some incredibly wealthy person offered them a quarter of a million dollars for it. And I do remember being like, if I could find that white skirt with the white stones, I would pay anything. The little bitty cup of french fries on the side with the salad and the wine you need it. Yeah, it's all about balance. You know, the discussion was always between Big and Aiden. And I was always like, there's a third. Like, who is that third? Hello, Sarah Jessica Parker. How are you? Uh, I'm good. How are you? I'm well, thank you. I couldn't be more excited and honored to talk with you today about And Just Like That Season 2. If you're lucky, no matter what life hands you, <laughs> you can always count on your closest friends to be there. <gasps> oh, thank you. My purse was exhausted. We are all blissfully unaware when our lives are about to change. Life is full of surprises. And just like that, I realized some things are better left in the past. But maybe not everything. I can ask you a hundred things, but I'll start with the fashion. At the beginning of the season two trailer, we see Carrie uncovering her iconic bird cap from her wedding. I have my bird here with me today. What was it like revisiting that piece of Carrie's history? Um, it was very special. I love that bird. We we fought for that bird and Michael ended up writing that bird into the movie. And um, it's very special. Molly Rogers told this amazing story the other day that some incredibly wealthy person offered. It belongs at New York Vintage. Apparently someone offered them a quarter of a million dollars for it and would not sell it. So it's not just meaningful to me, um, but it was great to see it again and open that box and put it on camera. And I always look forward to the audience's, not just reaction, but the feelings that come with some of those familiar kind of uh, visual milestones. Um, it's great. It's great to be able to have all that at our fingertips and, and use them wisely. I really love that. And I really had that same reaction, that fan moment that you talk about. Um, it was really exciting. <laughs> Good. And along the lines of clothing, a lot of Carrie's wardrobe in the original series came from your own closet. Like I know the scarf that you wore in the series finale is yours. Mm -hmm. Are there any pieces in this season of And Just Like That that come from your closet? I think there is a pair of sweatpants from a really cool brand um, that I never pronounced correctly. Pangea, I think it's called. And oh, yeah, one Sonia Riquiel vintage domino studded bag. Oh, fabulous. Yeah. And obviously we know Sex and City and Adjust Like That both take place in New York, which is your home as well. But I'm curious, what is the biggest difference between your New York City and Carrie's New York City? I think it's the way we navigate around it, you know, what we do, how we spend our time, how often we eat out, which is she eats out a lot and orders in a lot. And we just don't as much. She's an uptown person. I'm a downtown person. There's just a lot of ways that that our cities are different and our relationship to the city is. But the 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 love for the city is. Very aligned. Yeah, it was an honor and a pleasure speaking with you today. Likewise. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a great day. Hi, Kristen. How's it going? It's going good. I'm so thrilled to be talking with you today. Thank you. You're adorable. I love your shirt. Oh, thank you. I had to wear my flowers for Sex in the City and nice. just like that. I was lucky to watch a couple of episodes and there's a very funny episode where Charlotte is fighting with a luxury vintage retailer to get one of Lily's classic Chanel dresses back. Is yeah. there a look from your own past that you would do anything to get your hands on again? Oh, didn't see that question coming. I would never give any of my favorites, you know, away. Though I do remember a few pieces of Prada from the glory season of like 2004 that I remember searching for a while, trying to get them like I had borrowed them. And I do remember being like, 
if I could find that white skirt with the white stones, I would pay anything, anything. But I've never been able to find it. But I, w- I would not give any of my favorites. I'm, a, I'm, I'm hoarding them. I don't know what I'm going to do with them. It's probably not smart. But you know, they're one of a kind, and they were made for me. And I, you know, I love them. I totally understand. I'm a hoarder in the same sense. <laughs> And something else we both have in common, we are both very strong dog people. Um, And I just love your original Sex in the City dog, Elizabeth Taylor, so much. So I have to ask about Charlotte's current dog in and just like that, Richard Burton. Yes. How is he as an on-screen partner? Amazing. Much heavier than Elizabeth Taylor. But he is our secret weapon. I mean, I don't know how much you've seen, but like we use we use Richard Burton a lot this season because Richard Burton is very talented. So it was so perfect. And I really, really, really love that dog. My daughter also is really jonesing for for she she saw a combo like Cavalier Poodle. But this is what she wants now. But I'm like, you know what? We we have to rescue whatever it is. Whenever we get ready, we're gonna rescue a dog. And that will be our dog that's meant for us. And I have faith in that. Well, I wish you luck on your dog adoption journey. Thank (laughs) you so much for talking with me today. Can't wait for everyone to see the show. Thank you. You were a fantastic last interview. Hi, Karen. Well, first, I just want to say thank you for hanging out with me today. Of course. Of course. I have seen more than half of season two, and it's fantastic. (laughs) Good. That's what I love to hear. I will take you to the place to meet single men. I get it now. These one night stands are amazing. Afternoon, Professor Professor Wallace. Wallace. Good afternoon, ladies. We are introduced to Dr. Nia Wallace in the first season as sort of just a new member of the group. What first drew you to Nia and what can we expect from her in season two? Well, initially what drew me to Naya was this conversation that the writers and producers wanted to have about opening up the aperture of the show to make it more diverse and and more inclusive. And what I found was a genuine and welcoming idea about not just what the original women on the show were sort of uh, dealing with, but also what a woman who looks like Naya is about. And what we also see in season two as she is transitioning out of her marriage is um, a lot of vulnerability. This season is about new beginnings. And that's definitely true for Naya Wallace. I'm already a big fan of yours from your roles in some other pretty iconic series like The Morning Show and Yellowstone. What's it like moving to a more light, high, lighthearted or comedic series like and just like that? Well, it's much needed. What I was <laughs> um, from the soap opera that is Yellowstone to the drama that is the morning show. It's an actor's dream to be able to dabble in all of these areas and to um, create characters with these incredible collaborators. So I feel very fortunate. And the girls are always meeting over drinks or dinner or brunch or lunch. What is your ideal lunch with the girls order? Oh, uh, my ideal lunch order with my girls is a chicken Caesar salad and a glass of Sauvignon Blanc. Lovely. (laughs) And And a little and a little bitty cup of French fries on the side. You need the fries. You always need the fries. With the salad and the wine, you need it. Yeah, it's all about balance. Well, (laughs) thank you so much for talking with me today. Congratulations on the new season. Can't wait for everyone to see it. And thank Thank you. you. Okay, thank you. Have a great day. Hi, Sarita. Thanks for hanging out with me today. We are introduced to Seema in season one, and I immediately just wanted to know more about her. What can we expect from Seema in season two? You're going to get to know her more, and you're going to see where she lives, and you're going to see not just the work mode Seema, but the hanging out. Even her friendship with Carrie has progressed. There's an ease that built in season one, but it's just there now. A bit more comfortable this season. (laughs) Yeah, which is dangerous. (laughs) Uh, So I was lucky enough to watch some screeners in advance, and your character has a very funny, almost traumatic episode involving a prized Birkin bag. 
Yes. Um, and I was wondering if there is an item that you cherish in a similar way. First of all, I love that any woman journalist, it's not even ironic. They're like, it's traumatic. Oh, I, absolutely. I, I love that. Um, so one it was uh, is a trench coat, like a, a real French trench coat that makes you feel like you're in the movies. Um, and one um, wore a pair of boots I bought like 20 years ago. But back then, they were Nicole Fari boots. They cost over 700 quid. And I wasn't earning, I mean, I had no money. But I, I knew these boots would change my life, and they did. That's when it's worth it. When you're like, I will be that person in the movie in my head and meet that boyfriend. And it actually happens, kind of. Just channel your inner Sima and just be fabulous. Yes. And you live in New York yourself. What mm -hmm. is the biggest difference between Sima's New York City and your New York City? Oh my, everything. <laughs> um, I'm a downtown Sima. I live in a loft. I ride my... I just realized I ride a bicycle. She has a chauffeur. It's so very different. And I do my own laundry. I don't even know SEMA. Yeah, I I would love to see that part of SEMA. No, I don't think she does her own laundry, but I want to see who does it. Yeah, this season, we get to see the inside of her apartment. Next season, I want to see who's doing her laundry. Where does she eat when she's not in a restaurant? Like, yeah, does she have a caterer? What? How does like, she get fed? Carry thing with the stove. Like she doesn't know that the stove is for cooking. I don't even know Seema has a stove. Do you know what I mean? I think it's on that level. We haven't even seen the kitchen. You have, yeah. Maybe there is. <laughs> so I know that you're also a fan of the show yourself before joining the cast. And someone from Carrie's past may or may not join this season, her ex, Aiden, who is one of my personal favorites of the exes. Do you personally have a favorite of Carrie's exes? You know, the discussion was always between Big and Aiden. And I was always like, there's a third. Like, who is that third? But all I can say is like, when the rumor happened that Aiden was coming back, you know, do you realize what a fan you are? I'm so excited to see him. Me too. I'm not that kind of, did you say me too? Yes. <laughs> I love that. But you said that like you were on set with me. Oh. <laughs> it was so sweet. Um, but I didn't know, I didn't realize when you're on the show, you, you stop being a fan because you're like, I'm on the show. So I got to take this seriously. It's my job, whatever. But you, you, you start to realize what a fan you are. <laughs> And you have to reel it in. Yeah, so that's how I feel right now. There's acting going on in the show. <laughs> well, I really appreciate you taking the time chatting with me today. Total Sex and City conversation. <laughs> thank well, you. Well, thank you so much. You too. Bye. You don't move on because you're ready to. You move on because you've outgrown who you used to be. I've repurposed my kitchen. Did you know stoves aren't just for storage? Some days are hot and it's okay. I thought I was doing so well, I got through that whole first year. The way you've moved on, we're so proud of you. Life too short not to try something new. I'm on the precipice of doing something either really stupid or totally liberating. I don't know who you are. Is there something you're not telling me? Cheers. Come work for me. But my kids need me even more these days. Are you wasted? We did some shit! No! I will take you to the place to meet single men. I get it now. These one night stands are amazing. Afternoon, afternoon Professor, Professor Wallace. Wallace. Good afternoon, ladies. We are all blissfully unaware when our lives are about to change. Do you? Yes, I will. And just like that, I realize you never know what tomorrow will bring. Sitting here with you is like 10 years just. <laughs>